Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So this is just a very brief overview of some of the software available for the Linux distributions. So one of the great and powerful things about Linux that I really loved as I moved into the Linux platform is I didn't have to buy a lot of expensive software. Now the great news is if I find software that I really love, I, I can go and I can donate to those foundations which will help their cause in developing the software better. Or I can even, if I'm a coder or a programmer, I can actually look at the source code and either make my own fork or maybe make some recommendations or examine the code, make sure it's not doing anything funky. And one of the greatest things as a web developer that I have found is that I can go onto the various package managers and I can look for and experiment with different software packages that might be available for, uh, for my Linux, uh, Linux system. So whereas on my Windows computer, I think there's probably some open source versions out there. In fact, I know that there are, but you know, I've gotten accustomed to using Dreamweaver from, from Adobe over the years. Well, Adobe is now moving to the subscription-based service, and I don't like subscription-based products very much. I, I'm not going to be paying Adobe every month or every year for the rest of my life for using their software. Ain't happening. But what I really like is on the Linux software, I can go on there, grab the source code, I can change it if I want, I can make some customizations if I want, but I found that uh, Bluefish uh, Editor is great as a replacement for uh, for Dreamweaver. And uh, there's another one, uh, Aptana, a little bit harder to install that one, but the Aptana project uh, is also a very nice nice platform as well. The, the point is there are a lot of different Linux-based software editors on a lot of different things. So if you're used to using an Office program, LibreOffice does what 95 or more percent of Office users need to have. And it's a system that is open source and free to use, of uh, even in commercial applications. Uh, double check the, the uses conditions on that, but I'm pretty sure that is the case. Um, there's, there's packages for video editing and, and for audio editing. And these are packages that, that in many ways we think of the software that we need to do our work and we think of having to put out a lot of money for the software. For example, um, um, you know, I do, I do some work with a startup game company and, and uh, they, they're using 3DS Max, which also is going to this hugely expensive subscription model. To use the system, you have to pay them, I forget what it is. It's, it's like $100 a month or something just to use the software versus you used to just be able to buy it and then it was yours until, I don't know, it stopped working or whatever. Well, it, it kind of, if you look at it, it's, it's certainly better for the companies to run the subscription models. But, you know, me, as I was getting started in, in, in all my work and as I was a professor in, in my past life and, you know, and maybe even as a student, I had Office 95 came with my first computer. And I didn't bother with Office 97, and I didn't bother with Office 2000, and I got a copy of Office 2003 when I was a professor, and our particular university gave a copy of it, legal copy of it, to every one of their professors, even for use on their home computers, as long as we work for that school. Well, after I stopped working for that particular school, you know, it's no longer legal to use, Office 2007 comes out. So I bought a copy of Office 2007, and that's what I still run on my Windows computer. Well, now it's, they got Office 2010 out into Office 2013, now it's moving to Office 365, a subscription-based service. And I just have to keep on paying Microsoft for the rest of my life on an annual basis to use their software. Ain't happening, it's not happening. And for me, LibreOffice does absolutely everything I could do on a Microsoft Office platform, including some advanced spreadsheet stuff. And I know I have a lot of advanced spreadsheets for a lot of purposes, and I can use LibreOffice just fine for all those purposes. And then if you get into 3D animations, you can pay whatever hundreds of dollars for 3DS Max, which I've actually found there's no tutorials on, or you can use Blender. And I did my 3D graphics and 3D animations um, for this website on Blender, which has abundant amounts of 
free tutorials online, all sorts of resources. And I was able, I'm not, a, I'm not a professional in 3D designing, but I was able to do a lot of those 3D design graphics myself just by following some online tutorials and hints and tips and tricks. And it was free and open source software to use for the purpose that I wanted to use it for. So you can browse the whole catalog of different software. There's more software out there than I could possibly overview or get into in-depth reviews. But I just hope to whet your appetite to start looking at some of the software packages and how you could use the software packages that are free and open source on a Linux system to replace the expensive software that you might have to buy to be productive on a Windows or on a Mac system. So this has been Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.